their respects to George Floyd. Thousands more expected in his hometown of Houston. This as a former police officer charged in his murder is in court for the first time. And demonstrators take to the streets in Minneapolis, fiercely calling to defund the police, confronting the mayor after he refused to support. Overnight, the stunning headline, the city council votes to begin the process of what they call ending their entire police department. The mayor joins us live only on GMA This Morning. Backlash. More former military leaders and prominent Republicans speak out against the president. Mitt Romney takes to the street with protesters. And now former Secretary of State Colin Powell says he's voting for Joe Biden, calling the president a divider who lies all the time. Crystal ball making landfall, lashing the Gulf Coast with storm surges and flash flooding, neighborhoods underwater, the storm spinning out nine reported tornadoes in Florida. We are tracking the latest this morning. Ready to reopen, 400,000 people back to work in hard hit New York City, 100 days after the former epicenter's first reported COVID case. Governor Andrew Cuomo declaring the city has crushed the curve. As cases increase in 20 other states across the country, the death toll in the U.S. climbing past 110,000. And our ABC News exclusive, the new evidence that coronavirus may have been spreading through Wuhan long before Chinese health officials sounded the alarm. Dramatic takedown. Good Samaritans capture a suspected cop killer. We are holding him on the ground right here. After a deadly ambush involving gunfire and explosives, killing a California deputy, injuring two others. The FBI's urgent investigation. And kids calling for change. How the new generation is standing tall in the fight against racism. The youth movement gaining momentum across the country. Plus, the nine-year-old who's making a big impact, raising $30,000 to help Minneapolis. And this morning, we're making her Monday. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. Good morning, America. Thank you for joining us this Monday morning. What an extraordinary moment this is in America. Mm. It has been two weeks since the killing of George Floyd sparked a movement that has now gone global. Protests swept our nation from coast to coast over the weekend, Robin. And that movement is continuing, as you know, George, from protesters taking to the streets in Los Angeles to demonstrators in our nation's capital. That powerful Black Lives Matter painted on 16th Street in Washington, D.C. That sign inspiring other cities to paint similar works of art across the country. Take a look at this one in Raleigh, North Carolina, Amy. Beautiful. End racism now. And then take a look at this other stunning image out of D.C. There was over a mile of fencing now surrounding the White House, but protesters decided to make the most of it to make it part of the movement, posting signs for change. And in the city where George Floyd was killed, the Minneapolis City Council promised last night to dismantle the police department. We're going to have a live response this morning from the mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Fry, in an exclusive interview. He's standing by to talk with you, George. We're, we're going to continue in Houston, where thousands, as we've said, are expected today at a memorial for George Floyd. Marcus Moore is there with the latest. Good morning, Marcus. Oh, Robin, good morning. It will be an emotional day here as those thousands of people are expected to uh, come to this church for the public viewing for George Floyd. This is the church his family attends here in Houston as people in cities across the globe protest Floyd's death. From coast to coast, thousands gathering to peacefully protest racial injustice and police brutality. 10,000 people paying their respects at a memorial for George Floyd in North Carolina, his death igniting a global movement. Some death ain't about dying. Some death is about waking all of us up. In Washington, D.C. Sunday, civil rights icon John Lewis, who marched for equal rights in Selma in 1965 and was beaten by police, this weekend, standing on a newly painted mural, the words Black Lives Matter leading right to the White House. He said the nation is sending a, quote, strong message to the world that we will get there. According to the Washington Post, preliminary data shows that more places have held protests since Floyd's death than the 2017 women's marches, previously the biggest single-day demonstration in American history, and that they're not just in large cities, but in small, historically conservative communities as well. 
like Vider, Texas, a town with a history of KKK and white supremacy activity in its past. When light shows up, darkness has, has to go away. So, so we're hoping with all this light that all the darkness will go away and stay away. This as the nation grapples with other violent incidents caught on tape. Oh, no! Overnight, a terrifying scene at this peaceful demonstration in Seattle. Police saying a man drove this car into a crowd of protesters and later shot a person. People start trying to bust into his car to stop him, and he pulls out a gun. So I, I started running away. Next thing I'm hearing, someone's got shot. This video showing the suspect with what appears to be a gun as he disappears into the crowd. Officers later arresting the man and say the 27-year-old victim is in stable condition. And in Buffalo, two officers now charged with felony assault after shoving the 75-year-old man to the ground. He was hospitalized. The officers who pled not guilty face up to seven years in prison. In many places, protesters calling to defund the police, some asking that a portion of police budgets be given to the communities to fund hospitals, housing, and schools. Sunday, the Minneapolis City Council announcing their plans to end the police department, saying that decades of police reform efforts have proved that the department cannot be reformed. Our commitment is to end our city's toxic relationship with the Minneapolis Police Department to end policing as we know it and to recreate systems of public safety that actually keep us safe. But on Saturday, the city's mayor was asked about defunding the police department during a visit to support protesters at the site where George Floyd died. We don't want no more police. Is that clear? We don't want people with guns toting around in our community, shooting us down. It is a yes or a no. His response leading to booze from the crowd. Leaders in New York and Los Angeles are among those calling to shift funding away from police departments. Meantime, back in Minneapolis, Officer Derek Chauvin is expected to make his first court appearance on charges of second-degree murder and manslaughter. George. Okay, Marcus, thanks. We are joined now by the mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Fry. Mayor, thank you for joining us this morning. We just showed that video of you, and we heard about what the council is deciding to do right now. So will you veto a council resolution to dismantle the Minneapolis police? department well, let me be clear I am for massive structural and transformational reform to an entire system that has not for generations worked for black and brown people we have failed them and we need to entirely reshape the system we need a full-on cultural shift in how our Minneapolis Police Department and departments throughout the country function uh, am I for entirely abolishing the police department? No, I'm not. And so over the coming days and weeks, I'm looking forward to working with council and talking with them about deciphering what particularly they mean uh, when they say ending and abolishing. Uh, and I'll be talking with them directly. Well, they, 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 they were very clear last night this has to be the beginning of the end of the police department. You also have people like Congressman Milhan Omar, who represents Minneapolis, saying the police department is rotten to the core, that it can't be reformed. They believe it has to start from the ground up. Well, and in looking from the ground up, I, I look to our chief, Arredondo. This is someone who literally sued the police department for racial discrimination. This is someone who's chock full of integrity and has been doing the very hard work to get that transformational reform. And now he's our chief. Uh, I do support him. But let me be clear. There are so many areas where both mayors and chiefs, elected officials and otherwise, have been hamstrung for generations because we can't get that necessary culture shift because we have difficulty both terminating and disciplining officers and then getting that termination or discipline to stick. And so let me be very clear. We're going after the police union, the police union contract, the arbitration provisions that mandate that we have arbitration at the end of the process. And oftentimes that reverts the officer right back to where they were to begin with. We need to be able to have the culture shift. And if we're going to do that, it also means we need to have the ability to discipline officers to begin with. Okay, that, those are some of the changes you're calling for. Is there room for a compromise here with the protesters who are saying dismantle the police department? Just, just lay out what a compromise might look like and how you're going to get them to accept it. 
I don't want to speak for the peaceful protesters in Minneapolis. Uh, I can only speak for myself uh, and the vision that we have for the police department, which requires massive structural reform. Uh, and so, you know, everything is on the table at this point. Uh, I think right now we need to use this momentum, channel all of this, this anger and sadness and energy to real structural reform. You know, and I think we're coming to a reckoning right now, a, a reckoning of our words from the past with our actions that need to take place now and into the future. You are taking it from both sides during this entire crisis. We showed that video of the protesters telling you to go home, saying, threatening to vote you out next year. President Trump has not been shy on Twitter calling you weak. What kind of toll has this taken on you personally, and do you think it might cost you your job? Yeah, I have been attacked uh, by everyone from Donald Trump uh, to, yes, activists. But I, I want to be clear, I support people expressing their First Amendment rights, even when it means that they're calling me out. So is it difficult? Yes, of course it's difficult. But let's remember, this is not about me. This is about the tragic murder of George Floyd by a police officer. We need to be grounded in that as we move forward. Mayor Fry, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Amy? Well, George, turning now to Washington and President Trump coming under fire from former military leaders and members of his own party for using force to drive peaceful protesters from outside the White House and his threats to send the military into states. Senior congressional correspondent Mary Bruce has the latest on all of that. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Amy. Well, as thousands of protesters gathered here outside of the White House this weekend, the president was at home behind this massive new fortified fence. The White House is now almost completely surrounded by more than a mile of this fencing. The president walled in and increasingly isolated as he is facing a growing rebuke from his own party and top military leaders. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell, one of the nation's most prominent Republicans, now joining the growing chorus condemning the president with a blistering critique. He lies. He lies about things. And he gets away with it because people will not hold him accountable. Outraged at Trump's threat to use military force against American citizens, Powell says he's voting for Joe Biden. He didn't vote for Trump in 2016 either, and now Powell is calling out Republicans in Congress for not speaking up. Even more troubling, the Congress would just sit there and not in any way resist what the president's doing. One Republican who is, Senator Mitt Romney, there among the thousands marching for change in Washington this weekend. We need to stand up and say the Black Lives Matter. While inside the White House, President Trump fired off tweets downplaying the crowds and demanding law and order and announcing he's ordered National Guard troops to withdraw from Washington, saying everything is under perfect control. As House Democrats today outline sweeping police reforms, Attorney General Bill Barr insists there is no systemic racism in U.S. law enforcement. I think there's racism in the United States still, but I don't think that the uh, law enforcement system is systemically racist. I understand the, the distrust, however, of the African-American community given the history in this country. Barr defended the use of force against protesters outside the White House last week to clear the way for the president's photo op. Barr insists it was not a peaceful demonstration, and when pressed on the use of munitions to disperse the crowd, he falsely claimed pepper spray is not a chemical irritant. No, there were not chemical irritants. Pepper spray is not a chemical irritant. It's not chemical. Now, experts tell us that is simply not the case. The CDC classifies pepper spray as a chemical irritant. Bottom line, Robin Force was used here on what at the time were peaceful protesters. And that is the bottom line. All right. Thank you so much, Mary. Now to that storm making landfall near New Orleans and slamming into the Gulf Coast overnight. Rob Marciano is tracking the latest in New Orleans right outside there. Good morning, Rob. How's it going? Oh, Robin, well, look at all this water, for one thing. Uh, storm surge has been the big player with this system. This neighborhood inundated a good three feet of water on this roadway. It's about as far as we can go down. And beyond that, you can see the waves off Lake Pontchartrain crashing onto that seawall. This storm has had a huge impact area far away from the center, which now spins about 100 miles to our north. Cristobal making landfall in Louisiana, flash flooding and storm surge. 
Waves is pounding the seawall as Cristobal makes landfall now. Bit of a break from the rain, but the surge flooding just keeps on coming. This roadway turning into a raging river in Mississippi. The waves wrecking the highway in past Christiane. The conditions becoming impossible to drive. Cars stranded, land turning into sea. The waves whipping onto shore in Hancock County, where these rescue trucks had to go against the current to rescue these people from the Silver Slipper Casino. Casino employee Brittany Bosquet documenting as they headed back to dry land, telling ABC at one point they felt like they would fall out as the truck leaned on its side. Cristobal's bands reaching across the Gulf region to as far as central Florida. This EF1 tornado in downtown Orlando with winds of 105 miles per hour, one of nine reported tornadoes across the state. The twister uprooting trees and ripping off the roofs of these homes. This water spout forming off the coast of Gulf Shores, Alabama. And now all this rainwater will be transported as far north as Wisconsin. Robin? All right, Rob, thank you for being there. It's tough to see those pictures there. Think of my family and friends up and down the Gulf Coast there. Rob, thanks for being there for us. George? Okay, Robin, thanks. The latest now on the coronavirus emergency, with the U.S. death toll topping 110,000 and cases still on the rise in 20 states, there is some good news from here in New York. The city begins the first phase of reopening today. Stephanie Ramos has the story. This morning, New York City crossing a major milestone in the fight against the coronavirus. Forget flatten the curve. I'm going to change the state signs. We bent the curve. Exactly 100 days since the city's first confirmed case of COVID-19, the former epicenter of the outbreak now officially entering phase one of reopening. As many as 400,000 people back on the job. Stores now opening their doors for curbside pickup. But the pandemic is not over. The death toll in the U.S. now climbing past 110,000 and concerns growing about the spread of COVID-19 as hundreds of thousands march against police brutality. Kansas officials now warning a protester who marched there Friday and didn't wear a mask has tested positive. Nevada also seeing a spike as the Las Vegas Strip reopens with new safety precautions in place. But some casinos packed. LA Times sports columnist Arash Markazi capturing this footage at the Cosmopolitan Hotel and Casino Friday. Many seen without masks. And across the country, at least 20 states are still reporting an increase in COVID cases, including Pennsylvania and Arkansas. Officials there say they haven't even seen the repercussions from demonstrations yet. George. Still have to be careful. Okay, Stephanie, thanks very much. We are following a lot of other headlines this morning, including an ABC News exclusive a new investigation into the beginning of the pandemic. We're going to share what uh, some satellite images of hospital parking lots suggest about when COVID started spreading in China. And then NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell now showing support for players to protest peacefully. But first, let's go to Ginger. Yeah, what's left of Cristobal now a depression is going to surge north into a strong mid-latitude cyclone. What that means is flash flood watches extended to Iowa, even Wisconsin, and wind, big time winds from that. And when the front passes, 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts possible Tuesday night through Wednesday. Your local weather in 30 seconds. First, though, the select cities sponsored by Sherwin-Williams. with the very best paint only at your Sherwin-Williams store. Comfortable conditions to start our week. Best of the week, in fact, today, 83 degrees with that low humidity and lots of sunshine. Meanwhile, tomorrow and Wednesday, we've got temperatures up around 90 degrees and a little higher. In fact, muggy to soupy conditions. Wednesday, we'll track some showers and storms moving in late in the evening. And then Thursday, there could be some showers around the area as well up until about midday. Meanwhile, the end of the week, temperatures back in the 80s. Your weekend, 50-50, rain for Sunday. Interesting story this morning, Serena Williams and Alexis Ohanian, uh, they posted a personal conversation on Instagram about his decision to make a better world for their daughter. We're going to tell you about that when we come back. Ever since Daryl's family started using Gain Flings, 
Their laundry smells more amazing than ever. Uh, honey, isn't that the dog's towel? Oh.